According to Department of Justice data, between 2018 and 2021, video gambling machines featuring games like Kino and Video Poker brought the state close to $255 million in tax revenue. That means across that four-year span, video gaming machines all across the state took in $1.7 billion. The machines are a form of entertainment for some Montanans, and for many, they are precisely that. But they can be a problem for others. I kind of got hooked on the machines. Wendell Gary Rafter tells me the last time he sat down at a machine was over two decades ago, when he recognized the machines were causing him problems. He has been going to Gamblers Anonymous meetings since and rarely misses one. Uh, I like to play the machines and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I could also tell that uh, it was getting, I was doing more, spending more time and more money uh, all the time, uh, and it was getting worse. Rafter tells me that prior to the pandemic, around 12 people routinely came to Gamblers Anonymous meetings in Helena. He says that number has fallen, but he believes there are still compulsive gamblers out there that may need help. They shouldn't be embarrassed about it. They're, they're, I know that if all the compulsive gamblers in Helena, Montana came to our meeting, we'd have to meet at the Civic Center. Gamblers Anonymous is just one of the two resources the DOJ's Gambling Control Division recommends for problem gamblers. The other is the nonprofit Montana Council on Problem Gambling. MTN made multiple unsuccessful attempts to reach leaders at the MCPG, even going so far as to call the MCPG's toll-free helpline. When we did, we were connected with the Delaware Council on Problem Gambling. When we reached out to the National Council on Problem Gambling, Communications Director Kate Hovell told us that was not unusual. It's very, very common, especially in states that have very little problem gambling funding. The Montana Council on Problem Gambling's 2019 tax filings say Montana is one of the few states that does not require businesses that profit from gambling to donate funds to treatment for compulsive gamblers, meaning MCPG is funded entirely by donations. The organization's 2019 tax filings show MCPG received about $220,000 in contributions, with just under half of that going to program services that year. Bob Piccolo, a licensed clinical social worker that works with clients referred to him by the MCPG, tells me people seeking help with gambling addiction are getting connected with help. I like the way it has been. I, uh, compared to the earlier times that I was doing this, I've been allowed a lot more freedom to kind of do it the way I would like, which means more individual counseling for me. For anyone who thinks they have a compulsive gambling problem, Rafter asks all they do is try going to a meeting. You're not sure you're a compulsive gambler. Come and listen to some stories and see if any of those click in your mind. Yeah, hey, that's me. To learn more about resources available to compulsive gamblers in the state, be sure to visit the story on our website or call the National Problem Gambling Helpline at 1-800-522-4700. In Helena, Sam Hoyle, MTN News.